What is going on fellow developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in the last video we created a layout, some CSS layouts with um, Flexbox. Now in today's video we're going to be creating a CSS grid layout here as you can see on screen which is responsive and breaks down as you go. Um, and it's it's so easy. It's less than 50 lines of CSS and it's and you could do so much with it. So as you can see here, as you stretch it out and as you stretch it down, it just changes size. Everything lines up, so everything stretches to fit, so it's all the equal size. So without further ado, guys, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start this tutorial off with a blank CSS directory here. Well, not a CSS directory, I've called it CSS Grid YouTube directory. Um, I've opened it up in VS uh, Code, and what I'm gonna do is create a new file called index.html. Hit enter, and that is gonna open up a blank HTML file. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do exclamation mark tab, and as you can see, that's gonna create us a simple document. Now, if you don't have M installed or you're not using VS Code, then you can stop this video copy this out and then crack on with the video so under title what I'm gonna do here is type uh, CSS grid that's about to type in flexbox there and then we're gonna create a SAS file so we're gonna be using SAS now if you haven't used SAS before you're gonna need a SAS compiler or you can just use a uh, normal CSS it just may look slightly different so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a um, CSS or SAS folder and inside that folder I'm gonna create a excuse me, inside that file, I'm gonna create a main.scss file. And then in here, I'm just gonna do an, uh, an asterisk and say margin zero padding zero box sizing border box. And then font family is gonna be Fira Sans Sans Serif. There you go, and that's just default styling. There is a comma there. Why do I think there wasn't one? Um, and that's what we're doing for this uh, bit for now. Now I'm going to hit watch SAS. Now there's an extension by Ritwick Day. It's called Live SAS Compiler. And when you do it, it will compile your SAS into a CSS file just like this. So if I go to my extensions and I type in here live SAS, you can see we have this live SAS compiler down here by Ritwick Day and all it does allow you to compile your CSS. You do need Node SAS installed to be able to use it, um, but then it will compile it for you. We're also going to need another extension called Live Surfer. This one is also by Ritwick Day, another amazing extension, and it basically allows you to run a web surfer. Now, you don't need this. You can just open up your index.html file in your browser, but I don't know. I like to use a, a, a little web surfer. I think it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, so now if I, if, now every time I say, if I save this file, we need to link in our CSS. So we're going to say dot slash CSS main CSS. There we go, so that should be now styled in. Let's add a H1 and just say CSS grid, just like that. Now, to open this up inside of our browser um, with Live Surfer, we just need to right click the, the file and click Open with Live Surfer. And that will create one which open on a different tab here, as you can see. Um, and now we've got CSS grid, cool. So, because the only two files we're going to need is index.html and main.sass, we can close this um, sidebar here and we'll do a quick zoom in a little so you have a bit more space to see what's going on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a dot grid here, as you can see. And inside this grid, so this is going to be our CSS grid container. Let's just space it out. You know, we'll, we'll make it fancy. We we'll even had a comment saying CSS grid container. And then we'll do a dot slash CSS grid container there we go and then in here we're just gonna have columns so dot col and i'm gonna have columns i'm gonna have about four five four five we'll have eight overall so we'll just do eight now and then we'll have eight h3s in there and in the h3s i'm just gonna say col one col two col three col four <laughs> you get the point col five and col six col seven and col eight so that's all we need for now. We'll add the rest of the elements in here in a moment just so we can see what it's like with different uh, types of elements in it. So let's go into our main here. And what we need to do is just say, CSS grid is actually so simple and a lot of people find it hard, but just stick with me and watch this. So we're gonna start off with our grid, right? 
And for mobile, we just want it to display as block, right? And we just want some padding of 16 pixels because we want them all to sit like this. As you can see here, we don't want them all next to each other on a mobile phone. Um, so let's just shrink this down to the very small size, so like that, um, just so we can use that then. Let's actually just do the column quickly and inside the column, we're just gonna have a background color of pink and also a uh, margin bottom of 16 pixels. There you go. And we'll just do a padding of 16 pixels. Now we don't actually need this. We don't need to do anything in here in terms of setting up our grid. Um, because all the stuff we do for our grid to set up, up our columns and that is all done within this one class here so it's that powerful you can have one class that will control control your whole grid layout um, so we don't actually need this dot column if we don't want to but I've added it in there just for styling purposes so we can actually see um, the different boxes cool so inside of our grid we now want to create a, um, a media uh, thing to make it responsive and we're going to do min width 768 so at a standard tablet size we're then going to display this as a grid because we want to start our grid we're going to give this a grid gap now the amazing thing about grid gap is how powerful it is so with css uh, with flexbox to add grid you have to start using to have add an even grid you have to start really messing around with uh, minus margins and stuff like that but whereas with grid you have this grid gap natively built in so you could just do grid gap 16 pixels so everything will be perfectly 16 pixels apart so let's grid template columns now this is how we well as it says this is how we template our columns so how do we want our columns to look on a let's say a if we move this out here this is roughly a um ipad size screen so what do we want it to look like we're going to say repeat now what repeat does is it allows us to repeat the column so we could just say one fr one fr one fr and one fr hit save and as you can see we've got a four column grid now what does one fr mean it means one fraction so if we have four four one fr so that means one fraction out of four so it's basically saying evenly split this between that now we could make this one two fractions and as you can see it's now two times the size of the other ones we can make this um, three fractions and as you can see it starts really changing how it looks and this is really cool if you want to set some funky layouts but if we just want a, a very even grid layout we can say repeat and we can say how many columns we want so let's say for the to iPad or the tablet we want two columns which are all equal sizing so one FR and there you go we now have an equal size grid but you can see there's double spacing here because we've added um, we've added grid gap of 16, but inside of our columns, we've added margin bottom of 16. Now, the reason we've done that is for our mobile view, because when we go down, you can see obviously we we won't add, if we take off the margin bottom, you can see we don't get any spacing. But with the grid gap on a um, tablet, which we've added, gives us 16 gap. Now we could we could take this out here, remove this. We could put that in here right and we could leave that out save and if we go oh, not I didn't mean to save that I mean to save this side and let's go down here and as you can see we still get our grab now this is probably the better way to do it so I'm actually going to do it that way I wasn't going to do it that way I was going to leave in my padding and that but I think that's actually a better way to do it you know what it is I was wrong now here we go so now we've got a new way of doing it so we're just going to be using our grid in here so let's remove the display block and let's put this padding underneath gap now if we remove the padding you'll see it touches right to the edges. So grid gap adds the gap in between the columns and the rows, but it does not add it to the edges. So that's where we add padding of 16 pixels, which will add the outside padding as well. Um, so you have real control. So if you wanted more padding on the outside, we could say, let's say 32 pixels, you can see we can add that padding and keep the inside consistent. So grid gap, using grid gap and padding together is a really powerful tool. So we've got this, but on a bigger screen, you can see it doesn't look so great. So let's go into our here. Let's copy this, paste it again. And all we have to do is say our next screen size. So let's say 960. And let's say we want three columns. And let's do this one more. And let's just say at 1200 pixels, we want four columns. 
So now as we scale up, you can see it now breaks down evenly as well in its perfect grid comps. Now it's a perfectly responsive CSS grid. So for your blog or let's say a Instagram feed or whatever you're doing, you can create these super even grids and you don't actually need this call. So you just need one class to do it all. So as you can see here, even though we haven't got that call, it's still doing it by default. Obviously the reason we have to call here is to add some styling because you're obviously going to need styling for your little blocks here but in this case we don't actually need it so there you go so you can see the power of css grid already but let's take this one further so let's say we have um columns let's say this one is actually just an image we're gonna say slash slash placehold it for slash 300 um there you go so that's that let's actually go in here and let's just add a tag for images i'm just gonna say image uh display block width 100% but also max width 100% because we don't want it to go overboard there we go and now let's go back to index and let's just delete the column one because let's say this is just an image there you go so this is just going to be an image let's say this one's an image with some oh no a text one with Lorem of 20 pixels there so that one's there um, we'll add a couple of we'll have a break tag in there so it's got a bit of space now let's say this one has an image um, which I have placehold uh, dot it forward slash 300 150 um, and we'll have some paragraph in it of Lauren 40 double the amount of text uh, let's just add break tags under here so we actually have some spacing around there you go so there's that one then let's just add some paragraphs here we'll just say a Lauren of 20 again um, we'll do this one with a image slash slash place holds dot it forward slash 300 forward slash 150 um, we won't even add, we won't add um, text to this one we'll add text to this one again lorem 20 again um, this one will be another paragraph with lorem let's say 30 just I want to diffy it up uh, and we'll also have an image in this one as well so slash slash place hold it forward slash we'll say this one is um, 300 by 200 so it's slightly different size and the final one we're just gonna have a tiny bit of text we're gonna say lorem 10 so let's have a look what we've got here. so we've got this grid and as we stretch it out you can see it is still everything is evenly sized they all even though the um, even though it, there's different content in there, it's all different, it's mixing. The actual boxes are fitting the edges. So you can see it all fits, it all stretches to the right sides. But some of you might not want that, especially for the images one. So to prevent that, we can do two of two different things. We can go in here and down in our car, we can say align self start. Hit save. And as you can see, these will start at the beginning they'll just fill their own height so they won't take up too much height they'll stay in their own grid cells but they'll only take up the height they need so for images that's really good but let's say we don't want that for this let's say we want um we want it to be at the end so let's hit save and as you can see now they kind of sit at the end of the uh page so they instead of sitting at the top they sit at the end and as you've probably guessed there is also center so now they sit in between each other i find this one looking kind of ugly in a grid like this but this could work for like images or maybe even titles or something i don't know uh, but look there you go so that's another way you can do it so let's remove align self but let's say you just want it to be for your image blocks because obviously your image blocks are good but no one wants this pink box under there you just want an image so let's create an and dot image block so we can say align self and let's say we'll do it at the start we don't want it in the middle or anything uh, let's add padding of zero and then we can also have a background color of uh, none so let's go into here and let's find this one this one only has an image let's say image hyphen block hit save and as you can see now your image fits but everything else um, so the image is now the only size but everything else fits its content perfectly so you've got different info stuff with just images let's say you have Instagram feed mixed in with your blog post mixed in with like tweets right you could use this so your Instagram posts have only this because you don't want the extra blockage around it unless you're going to add a title the caption in there um, and it, so this gives you all this power to customize it and change it up however you like 
So there you go, guys. This is how simple it is. It's, well, it's taken us a few lines of code, less than 50 lines. Look, 42 lines, and there's spaces in between those lines just to create this super powerful CSS grid. Oh, I'm moving the wrong thing. Um, this CSS grid. Um, which is crazy. So guys, if you have enjoyed this mini tutorial, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you want to see more, and don't forget to comment any questions you guys have and I'll try and answer them as best as I possibly can. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.